This is the Earth Science Classroom. Prior to the Clean Air Act of 1970, there was the Air Quality Act of 1967 and the various air pollution events around the country, both in LA and Denora, Pennsylvania, both in the 1940s. Then there was the book Silent Spring, Rachel Carson, published in 1962, which led the country to take air quality more seriously. In addition to the Air Quality Act, America also had the first Air Pollution Control Act in 55, and then the Clean Air Act of 63. The Clean Air Act of 1970, which is our focus of this video, is where we started to get more strict standards and to isolate both primary and secondary pollutants and look at six main air pollutants and try to curb and reduce their emissions across the country, both from stationary sources and mobile or mobile sources. And this included the NAAQS, which is the National Ambient Air Quality Standards, which covered the six main pollutants, which were particulate matter, soft oxide, carbon monoxide, lead, nitrogen dioxide or oxides, and tropospheric ozone. This Cleaner Act was then amended in 77 and also in 1990. So the Clean Air Act of 1970, its main objective was to adhere to public pressure from recent events and to preserve the air quality for all people in the country. Not only the ones that had various health issues that were affected by air quality and air pollution and smog, but generally the emissions that were released from all the industrial, commercial, residential and transportation sources across the country. Obviously, automobiles and cars and gasoline cars and release of car exhaust was a big factor in looking at this air pollution, air quality, also with smog being around these major urban areas like Los Angeles. This really put a pinpoint on the sources and what we can do as a country and as a legislation to try and curb and reduce the emissions. And since then, since 1990, most of the six major pollutants have been reduced by an average of 50%, which in general is a good effect of this Clean Air Act of 1970 with the amendments in 77 and 1990. Now, unfortunately, nothing is perfect and you do get air quality alerts throughout the year, both in the summer and various weather patterns and phenomena do cause higher air quality issues and pollution around urbanized areas and the addition of acid rain as a major air pollution and concern was added in 1990. So in conclusion, there has been a long line of air pollution control acts from the government starting in 55 and culminating in 1970 with this big comprehensive federal legislation looking at the six main pollutants, analyzing and allowing the EPA to enforce these laws and pollutants from different sources, both secondary and primary across the country and trying to minimize and reduce Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on earth science.